Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to draw a zebra finch bird. So grab your pencils and let's get drawing. You first want to just do your outline, so the bird will probably come around like this. We're going to have it go down and we'll get the head over here. The beak, believe it or not, is actually quite high on the finch bird. So we'll get the beak over here. We'll go down over here. And we'll go down. We're not going to do the entire bird, but this will be the outline of our bird. So we'll start there. Um, these birds are actually only about 10 centimeters long. Um, so about 10 centimeters. So kind of a small bird, if you will. Think about, I don't know, 10 centimeters like that. So quite a small bird. Um, and what's also interesting is that uh, the males are actually brighter, much brighter and much um, colorful than the females. So if you've ever seen a zebra finch, the males are actually the colorful ones. So the in terms of the beak, you want to just get the beak kind of pretty flat and then kind of back. I'll show you how that comes together as well. And the top, <clears throat> you just want to make sure that you get the top of the beak looking pretty smooth as well. So the top of the beak, I wouldn't say it's curved, but it's definitely not straight. So you might actually get it just a bit of a curve just ever so slightly like that actually so try that we are going to clean up the beak but uh, this is obviously just a good starting point as well you can see I just want to clean that up just a tiny bit the beak actually goes really quite quite up there this is the top of the bird over here so the beak is actually there let's get um, this kind of mid-range of the beak just over here and I think we can curve up and kind of like that so you can actually curve and a bit like that but kind of like an S curve if you will so again we're gonna clean this up but this is certainly a good kind of starting point to do that um, the eye of the bird is actually just gonna be just above the beak line so you'll probably have the eye of the bird just over here and just a nice circle and in the center you can go dark okay and again we're gonna work on that as well i like drawing the eye it kind of sets the um, the tone for the entire drawing so just keep that in mind you don't have to do it that way but certainly nice to do the top of the the bird can have some feathering that kind of sits like this notice how i went a little higher i, I felt like the top of my the head of the drawing was a little too short so I kind of want to go longer so um, so we'll do that and I think what we need to do is straighten out this beak a bit I think it's a little too curvy so just ever so slightly just a bit of a, a bit of a straightening will help this look a lot better so what can we do, what can we do? I would say around the beak, you might want to um, establish that the beak is gonna be curved like this. And then down below, you're also gonna have a bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say curvature, but just some um, kind of morphing into the fur, like the feathering. So the feathering is actually just around here, right? So what you can do is you can actually um, get your feathering going and there's going to be some darker black feathering just around here so you can actually do that I mean you could you could use like a generic pencil or you can actually start dark so you can actually use a 7 or 8b just to get some darker tones in here as well so I'll just jump right onto a 7b and I'll put some darker feathering here when you're doing your feathering what you can do is you can actually um, just do this kind of pattern I find that this works really nice to draw feathers. Now, of course, this is for light continuous pattern feathers, so, but this is kind of the process that I would draw. See how that even starts to look a little more um, feather-like and just repeating that. So that's all I'm really doing over here. I'm gonna sharpen this pencil. It's a little too dull for my liking. And the good thing is that you can start with an unsharpened pencil, but if you sharpen it real nice, what you can probably do is also add in some finer lines as well so you kind of get a mix of both so um, perhaps down at the bottom you can see now this black 
um, feathering is right around the, be the beak. And if you look at any picture of a zebra finch, there is actually this kind of dark pattern that exists around the beak. So you want to be pretty uniform around the beak. You definitely want to have this kind of black um, space and feathers. So make sure that you do that. The other interesting thing is with the black um, around the eye, you might want to get just the ever slightest little bit of feathering here as well. And in doing so, what you can do is just kind of get this kind of very light pattern that goes down from the eye, goes down thinner, 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 and just like that. We could keep it like that for now, and later, if we need to add more to this, we will. Um, you can also jump to an 8B and add even darker tones as well. So if you wanted to just maybe touch upon some of that. Uh, around the eye, so I would say around this area, you will also have this kind of um, brown-like space that will kind of go like this. And down over here as well, so. So that piece there, you're actually gonna have as a different shade compared to everywhere else. So what I would say is grab a pencil. I would grab a 5B, and what I would do is just take this and extend it out. I'm not saying extending it dark, but extend it in a way that it looks like a different tone than the black, but lighter than the white, because we're gonna go lighter in other areas. So this is gonna be kind of a mid-tone on this drawing. So let's do that. Let's quickly get some tones over here. And we'll do that, we'll just kind of use our feathering technique to kind of get these feathers drawn. So by the way, the, uh, the zebra finch does, like I said, have a short beak and it's actually really, really strong. So that short beak is really strong. Um, basically like they can eat small seeds and they can like de-husk food and things that need to be de-husked as well. Um, de-husked of course is if you have like a food that has like any kind of not wrapping, but like protection around the food. Um, corn is dehusked or, or nuts. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So that's something that um, the short beaks are really good for as well. Okay. Okay, so we basically put some, some uh, mid-tones over here. I would also say that using your 5B, you can actually just create a very slight bit of tones on the beak. Use your curvature lines and draw down. So from the top of the beak, just start to draw in the downward position and just add a bit of curvature to that. You could do the same right underneath. Um, I do wanna fix something though. This beak over here could go a little lower like that. I think that will actually make this look a little bit more realistic. So I just wanted to clean that up as well. Um, not just there, but even over here. So if this were to go down right here, the piece under the, the neck, the, the beak, could kind of go down like that. That will actually help this look a little more realistic. So in doing so, you wanna just get some darker tones right below. If you can get darker right below, it'll look a lot more realistic as well. And I think you probably can guess we're just gonna add some shading underneath the beak um, just to make this look realistic as well. Over here, um, the beak will typically have some thicker, like a thicker space over here. So I wanna add that in as well. The reason that you have some thicker space here is, I'm guessing, um, I'm not a bird expert myself, but I'm guessing that when the bird starts like chomping down on food or, or nuts and food related things, what happens is, um, um, the, the bird sometimes can like, you know, roughen up their beak and the beak might actually just become a little rougher around maybe at the back part where they kind of have this like rougher kind of texture. See, I'm purposely doing that as well. Um, in doing so, you might find that the bird, be the bird beak actually gets a little like roughed up, if you will, sometimes even like, I guess just like humans that can like chip a tooth, a bird can um, chip its beak and then if it chips a beak you, you know you're not really going to repair that so you might have like some some kind of rougher kind of little pieces on the beak so that's kind of why I, I actually drew that on purpose like that so I might also just add some curvature lines just over here 
So let's do that. And just use your smudge technique as you wish. Again, let's just get a bit of curvature away from the middle of the peak. So we'll start in the middle and go back. Just like this. And just keep going until you're happy with the tones that you have. And for me, I wanna keep this going. I just want a little bit more um, shading on this peak and then I'll move on from there. How are you doing, by the way? Are you just watching along? Are you drawing? Is this some, for a project, perhaps? Let us know. We'd love to know kind of what brought you here. Um, was this helpful? Like, these are all the things that we always wonder when we do these drawings. So we'll just like, like fix up the beak just a tiny bit. Um, you could probably tell that the, the outer line of the beak was standing out too much. So I think that this will probably help clean that up a little bit as well. So. And you never really want like the finest little tip at the end. I do feel like bird beaks don't really have um, an exact tip at the point of the beak. They kind of have the ever so slightest little um, curved bit because in reality, they do kind of peck at a lot of stuff. So they, they often get uh, um, roughed up, if you will. So let's move back. Like let's move from the eye, uh, which will darken up in the center. Nice and dark, nice and dark in the center. We'll start to move back. Um, what we'll do is we'll just draw some lines around the outside of the eye. And then we'll add some more tones to kind of finish off the eye. So that's what we want to do is finish off the eye. Okay. So what we can do is over here, um, you're going to go from a white tone over here to gray up here. So what we might want to do is actually just, um, well, first off, let me sharpen. Maybe while I sharpen my pencil, I'll tell you that um, zebra finches actually start breeding from as early on as 70 to 80 days old. And actually, that's the fastest maturing bird that can mate. Um, ever recorded. So, so a zebra finch that can mate um, as early as 70 to 80 days, and then because they can, um, what happens is it's actually been marked as the, the fastest maturing bird. So the fastest bird to be able to, um, to breed as a result. So, so keep that in mind. It's, I find that really intriguing as well. I don't know if you get that joke, but it's intriguing. So what I'm doing here is using a nice sharp pencil, and I want to kind of just draw some feathering, if you will, and just kind of go from this white kind of space below and um, move my way up. So over here, I want very subtle pencil lines down below, right over there. Um, so the problem too is when you have this dark line, like this dark area, how do you transition from the dark to the white? What I do is just get a little bit of like lines just beside it, it kind of shows the transition from the dark to the white. Because in real life, I don't think a bird really transitions from the dark feathers to the white feathers instantly. I think there's a few feathers that kind of interlap, uh, like interlace or kind of overlap. And as a result, you kind of have this area where you have, you can see over here too, you have just like a little bit of fraying. It kind of looks like a little bit of feathering where the black kind of bleeds into the white. And that's actually perfectly normal. So. That's what I'm doing right here. Um, I'm gonna continue up at the top. And at the top, what you're gonna start to do is kind of draw this like, I don't know how to describe it, but kind of like a spotting pattern. It's, it's, the, it's what's gonna be the foundation of this bird's um, zebra pattern, but we're not gonna do the zebra just yet. Um, I think you'll see that shortly, but let's just, um, Let's just follow along with this, okay? So just watch me, watch as I go along. So I think what I'll do is I'll speed this part up because I'm gonna go right, out, right around. Um, so follow along, I'll speed this up, and when I get back, I'll kind of explain to you what I did and how 
um, we're gonna pull this all together. So follow along, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. <clears throat> you can see what we did was we filled in all of this area, but what's really interesting is the trickiest part is coming up right here. So I hope you're ready for this. We're really gonna make things interesting and we're really gonna show you some, uh, some ways to draw this. So the reason they call this a zebra finch is because it actually has a zebra pattern a little bit at the top, but actually more so over here. So what I wanna do is actually show you how to draw um, the zebra finch's um, belly and neck and draw it in a zebra pattern. So the reason I started with this dark area first is because it actually um, is actually one of the first parts of drawing um, zebra finch and it actually anchors the zebra area. So underneath the beak, what you need to do is just understand that a nice sharp pencil will get you there. Start feathering this way and move your way along the line that you created, okay? Now this is really easy because you just have to go down and just start going like this. Till about here. That's all you need to do, okay? And we're gonna fix this up. That's just establishing your outline. Now, you might also say, well, there's some feathers there, but you might also get some feathers that, like going the other way. Sometimes these birds have some feathering that looks just a little bit kind of like, like, sporadic and that's kind of what we're doing over there now you're going to be darker under the beak there's going to definitely be darker tones under the beak of course um, a nice clear line on the beak will help you establish those darker tones and you can also just grab a nice sharp um, 7 or 8b and just add some darker uh, feathering as well and someone's horn is going out there so i don't know what's going on but Gotta keep it down. So yeah, what we wanna do is just get some darker tones right underneath. It'll also help this look a lot more realistic as well. And it doesn't have to be a lot of dark, just, just a little bit will help that look a lot more realistic as well. The best part about drawing this is that this, well, this part is that this is where things become zebra-like. Um, it is, it can be really hard to do. So what I would suggest is you actually take your 8B pencil and start drawing your zebra lines. Um, so to draw your zebra lines, I know it sounds a little weird, but not there, but what you wanna do is you might wanna just get some lines that kinda go like this and kind of follow the curvature. See, this is a rounded part of the bird, right? So. Um, you want to make sure that the line that you're drawing here is curved. And if you're wondering how I'm drawing that, I'll show you in a zoomed up position over here. This is what I'm doing. I'm actually drawing a curved line in this structure. I'm just going like this in a curved way. Okay, let me sharpen my pencil. Keeping it nice and sharp will help this uh, help you a lot with this. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is repeat this process with the, uh, what we call the, the, the darker lines or the zebra lines. 
So let's get a few more lines over here. And they actually can be nice and close together. There's nothing wrong with that as well. And the great thing is that they can be sporadic. There's no kind of rule in terms of how these zebra lines have to be drawn. So you can actually keep it sporadic. We're gonna draw the zebra lines first, and then we're gonna do some fill around the lines. So the great thing about that is that these zebra lines, um, it might look very black and white right now, but they're actually gonna change. Um, they're actually gonna change as well. So, so don't worry about that uh, either. So what I'm gonna do is speed this part up again. I'm gonna go from here down. We're actually gonna go till about, I would say the belly right around here. So this whole area is actually gonna become what we call zebra. So follow along, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. You can see what we did was just put the zebra lines on this drawing, um, which is really, really nice, and it's starting to come together. I would suggest that you can actually take this a step further and um, just let's start blending in some of these lines. So you can grab a 7B and literally just add in some accent lines just in and around these dark lines that we did. We used an 8B just before. And the reason you're doing this, and specifically around the darker part of the belly, because the darker part of the belly really is on the under belly side, there's a lot less light. So I'm purposely trying to go darker on the under part of the belly. So let's do that. Um, let's just get a little bit darker around this part. And you can kind of see this is already looking a lot more realistic. So. Um, in that case, what we'll do is go back to our 5B pencil. The 5B is nice because it's kind of a middle range pencil. And what we can do is actually just feather in a lot more feathers in and around these zebra lines, right? So again, we're just using this process, right? That's our feathering drawing. That's how we draw feathers in, in this particular drawing on a bird. And all we need to do is just repeat that process to kind of get this going. So. Um, we're gonna work our way up along the belly. If you can work your way up like this, this will actually make for a real nice drawing, okay? If your pencil ever gets too dull, what you can do is just continue to sharpen your pencil on a regular basis. Um, it will look a lot better and just prove to be a better drawing as a result, so hopefully Hopefully you're doing all right. Hopefully you're following along. Have you ever seen uh, this bird before? Have you ever seen um, a zebra finch before? They're, they're truly an incredible bird. Um, and actually they're the most common native finch in Australia and are found in, in grasslands, forests around Australia as well. Um, but they're not found in the coldest parts or the most tropical areas. They're like kind of middle of the road in terms of like the climate that they like. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so we're gonna keep this moving. Um, I would say just in and around here, what you can do is, the question is how do you transition from these two? Um, we're gonna go back to the left side of the bird and um, continue our feathering. What you wanna do is keep this area pretty, pretty bright white. So um, I would say in order to do that, you could actually just not smudge out your work if you can, if you're okay to do that. If you're okay not smudging out your work, I'll show you how to basically um, transition this. So what you wanna do is just get your feathering over here. So we're gonna keep this moving. I'll try to be a little quicker with it. Um, so keep this moving, keep this moving. Um, 
what you basically do is you start moving your way into the zebra area, like the zebra lines, and you start to back off on the, the level or the number of pencil strokes that you're gonna make. So you're gonna kind of transition from this, this like denser area of feathering on the left, and you're basically gonna transition into um, a kind of a white area on the right. So um, it's kind of tricky. You can kind of sl start to slow down the, the, the level of feathering that you're gonna do. And you can also lighten up on the, the pressure of the brush stroke that you're doing as well. So this is something that you can do um, just like I'm doing over here. So you're kind of transitioning from one to the other. Um, you can give the tiniest little bit of, uh, of like a fade technique, if you will. You can give just the tiniest little bit, um, which I just did there. So you can do that as well. And you know, you want it to look realistic too. So at this point, what you can do is just say, you know, are there any kind of areas here that I'm not really happy with or that I want to like, better accentuate? And for me, the belly is looking just a little bit too zebra, like too much black, white, black, white. So I would say that you can um, just kind of clean that up and kind of clear that up, if you will. Just the slightest smudge actually would be okay. Um, so that's perfectly fine. And over here, if you ever feel like you want to just fix up a little bit of your feathering, you can do that as well. So yeah, that's basically how you do the zebra part of this drawing. And there's actually one more part right down here that we're going to do that uh, is really interesting and it kind of ties this whole drawing together. So let's fix up the beak as well. Down below on this, um, actually, wait a minute, there's something that I missed. Right over here under this patch, you actually sometimes have a continuation of the zebraing lines. So you can actually also have some zebra lines that exist over here. So don't be afraid to extend maybe around the neck area here and back. There's nothing wrong with doing that as well. So I actually purposely did that um, for you, okay. And then like I said on the belly, you might also feel like you just want it to look a little more uniform. And if you want, you can kind of clean that up as well. Okay, so I know for me, I want this to be a little bit wider, almost like a, like a belly-like part of the bird. And if, if you're doing that as well, you can just um, extend some of these featherings down as well. So, so hopefully you're seeing this come together. See, that looks a lot better already. Okay, now the last part of this drawing is really just going to be establishing what we call some of the spots on the bird. So this bird actually does have some, some white spots and the white spots will kind of exist kind of like this. Now, all I really have to do is draw a few of these kind of white spots that are not quite circular, not quite round, they're just kind of shield-like and they are kind of sporadic. So don't be afraid to kind of, you know, be like a bit wild with them. No matter what, they always kind of go down like this. They kind of always go down to a point at the bottom. So we're actually gonna draw some of these lines, uh, these white spaces down below. And around the part of the belly, they're actually gonna be um, actually, let's fix this. The interesting part about this bird, it is it actually has a white part down below. So these circles, these like white spots that are over here are actually just gonna be around this area. So um, yeah, so in doing so, what I would say is uh, grab your 5B and start shading in and around these white zones. Simple as that. So I'm gonna speed this up again. I'm gonna speed this up. We're gonna shade in around these white zones and when we're done, I'll be back and we'll kind of finish up this up. So hang with me, I'll be right back.
Okay, so we're back. Uh, we really sped that part up just to kind of give you the sake of efficiency and showing you how we kind of pull this all together. You could kind of see where we're at here. We basically have this beautiful, beautiful zebra finch bird. Amazing creature. Um, the zebra pattering is nice and the neck and underneath the beak, as well as just ever so slightly at the top. Um, I think at this point what we'll do is we'll just kind of clean this up or finish this up. Um, I would say that if there's anything that's missing on your drawing, you can kind of do that at this point as well. For me, I just want to basically make sure I get enough of the feathering um, in all the right places. And uh, especially down here with these white spots that are on this bird, um, we also want to just make sure that we uh, just capture the beauty of that. So yeah, that's basically really what I want to do. Um, I think we're looking pretty good at this point. I would say that we're pretty much done. You might want to just add a little bit of darkness to the beak if you're at this stage. You can just just add a little bit of darkness like that. Just give it a bit more of like a 3D effect, right? Um, maybe darker on, underneath on the below part. But other than that, I'm really happy with this drawing. I hope you are too. I'll say thank you so much for watching and have a great day.